It is a destiny launched by countless dreams, a beacon drawing the best and the brightest from the beginning. We had about 200 seats, but people stood around the excavation watching the performance. It was quite an unusual thing, of course. I mean, the biggest dreamer was Dr. Longmire. I mean, he came here as uh, he was relatively young. He was in his late 30s. Uh, he came here from Johns Hopkins. There was nothing here. You know, it was a barren plot. The, they worked out of Quonset huts where the VA is. It, it was really amazing what, what, what they were really able to accomplish. How did they do it? They did it through people. And Dr. Longmire, I think, had the vision to be able to, to, be able to bring around him uh, the brightest, the boldest uh, innovators people who were willing to take risks, people that were willing to explore the frontiers. And boy, there were a lot of frontiers in the 50s. The fact that we're celebrating this 50th anniversary and that we have achieved so much here, I think is one of the great American success stories. When everybody now talks about translational research and having science conducted that can be translated at the bedside, we were doing it 50 years ago. At that time, in 1955, it was radical thinking. And that's why this hospital has been so successful. That was the goal, that's how this university was founded, and that's what sustained it today. You know, we didn't have any patients, so... I would make rounds in the evening, go over to a sparkling clean ward, a nurse in a very starched uniform and a cap. Good evening, Miss Brown. Good evening, Dr. Dignam. How are things on the service? Just fine, Dr. Dignam. Do you have any patients on the floor yet? No, we don't, Dr. Dignam. So that was about 10 days. And then it started. It's built up pretty rapidly after that. I was a student at UCLA. In 1955, I was diagnosed with the coarctation of the aorta, which is a narrowing of the aorta, and in my case, to the size of a pencil point. Uh, they didn't give me a life expectancy beyond uh, 40. It's the beginning of the open heart surgery age. It was definitely a life-saving uh, procedure, and I'm still here today with three grown children and a couple of beautiful grandchildren and who just all oh, the grand my grandson is has been accepted at UCLA and he's starting in September 50 years ago UCLA doctors saved Beverly's life in the years to come there would be thousands more the most difficult cases often thought beyond a cure Dr. Lax put the patch over her heart and he put in the missing valve and just basically gave her a whole new start on life. Actually, they've saved his life six times. And not just nephrology, but cardiology and the ICU team, they are wonderful, they're lifesavers. They have specialists in every area that you could possibly imagine for children's orthopedic surgery, neosurgery, everything you name it, they've got it here. I just want them to be able to enjoy life as a kid. You know, I want them to walk, run, play like his brothers and sisters do. I don't think that anybody could have envisioned when the medical center started that it would have reached the heights it's reached today. Every place that you go, we're, we're cutting edge. That's why it's fun to be here. That's why I love being here. You weren't able to do this even last week. The greatest resource we have is our people. Grand ideas about, built UCLA. People were thinking in the beginning of the atomic era about how medicine could be revolutionized, how the resources of a great place like this could be directed, how good people could be brought into one place and work together in a very collaborative way to knock down some of the major barriers to better understanding of disease and to better treatment. And that's really happened over the past 50 years. Breakthrough after breakthrough, a half century of headlines. 
a legacy of hope. This has been an entrepreneurial faculty. They have always been willing to go where others were afraid to go. Paul Terasaki and his colleagues did pioneering work in tissue typing. This gave rise to the ability to do human organ transplantation. It was one of the single most important events that occurred in modern medicine. And that happened at UCLA. UCLA now is the largest and best known transplant center in the world. UCLA physicians describe the symptom complex that we now know as AIDS. UCLA physicians developed what is known as the Guglielmi coil that has been life-saving in so many people with brain aneurysms. Doctors at UCLA developed another coil to retrieve blood clots deep within the brain, reversing the devastating symptoms of stroke. There's a clot, but there's the cutoff, I right think. UCLA physicians have pioneered brain mapping. It's the conjoined twins, known as the two Marias. UCLA physicians performed a miraculous operation. I will go to their weddings. The co-inventor of the PET scan is at UCLA, and we were one of the first, if not the first, hospital in the United States to utilize PET scanning. And now UCLA physicians are out the forefront using robots to improve surgical outcomes and procedures. There is no question that UCLA is a leader in all of those areas. So hi Tim, how are you doing today? And as you know, we've been ranked uh, as okay. one of the top Open five your hands. Uh, medical centers uh, in the country by U.S. World and News Report for many, many years. In the future, when our new hospital opens, uh, we will continue to shape the future of medicine. The UCLA Medical Center, when it is 100 years old, will be celebrating even greater success. Let's do the best we can for our patients. Let's make this the best academic medical center in the world. Let us make this the best hospital in the world. We're proud of what we do. We are not afraid to push back the frontiers of medicine.